we're going to continue uh, with our discussion on Pada Sevanam, this beautiful island of the heart. So I want to tell you a small story. Are you all ready for a story? <laughs> this is a story from the Ramayana. Ramayana is a, is a beautiful uh, yoga text. It's an epic where uh, Ram, he is in search of his beloved wife who was kidnapped by a powerful demoniac king named Ravana. And in pursuit of trying to find his, his wife, he was in the, in the forest. And while he was in the forest, he was, you know, forests have various different uh, terrains, not just jungles and trees. There's rivers as well and mountains. So Lord Ram, he's commonly known as, he was trying to cross a river. And while he was trying to cross the river, there was a boatman, there was this tribal people that live in the jungles. And this boatman who was a big fan of his, just loved him so much. His name was Kevat. And he was so excited when he got to see Ram and he got to see his brother and Sita Devi, his consort. This is just before she got kidnapped by the king. So when he saw Lord Ram, he asked Lord Ram, you know, my dear my dear friend, my dear Lord, you want to cross the river. And I'm so happy I have this great honor and privilege to take you on my boat across this river. But, you know, I have this doubt in my mind. I have heard this famous story where you put your foot on a stone and that stone turned into a lady. So that is a separate story. It's a story of a lady who was, uh, who was cursed by a sage to become a stone because she was acting like a stone-hearted person in that story. So she was made to be a stone. That's a separate story. I'll tell you at another time. So Ram had just placed his feet on that stone and that stone turned into this beautiful, beautiful goddess. And her name was Ahalya. And so he told Lord Ram, he says, I'm a little worried because it seems like wherever you put your foot, something happens. So I want to make sure that my boat that you're about to put your foot on does not turn into a lady. And, you know, as it is, I have enough on my, on my plate. I have one lady at home and I have enough. And I don't need more complications in my life. So Ram said, okay, no problem. So what's your proposal? He said, I want to wash your feet to make sure, you know, uh, you know, just make sure it's clean and everything is right. What he was trying to do, Kevat, was that he was trying to get an opportunity to serve his dear most friend, so dear to his heart. Although it's so dear to his heart, his friend Lord Ram is considered a very divine being. So he took the water and he washed the feet of Lord Ram. And when he washed the feet of Ram, he was so happy that finally I get to wash the feet of of, of the person that I love the most in the whole world. I get to serve him with my heart. And I get to personally pour this, this water, this 
this beautiful water from this river and wash his feet and touch his feet. So he was super excited, super happy he got to do something for his friend. And Ram is noticing this, that, you know, that uh, this, this Keva, this boatman was taking tremendous pleasure in serving him. And next to him was Sita Devi, who was Lord Ram's divine consort. And she kept looking at Kevat, this boatman, and the boatman kept looking at him, looking at her, I mean. And there was this beautiful loving exchange that was happening between the boatman serving her uh, Sita Devi's husband, Lord Ram. So a little background story to that, which is also mentioned in the Puranas, is that Ram has incarnated in his original form. Ram is Vishnu who lays in the causal ocean on a big, massive serpent. Imagine that. It's, it's, it's kind of uh, difficult to imagine someone laying on a serpent. Has anyone ever seen anybody lay on a serpent? Not a common sight. But the serpent is a divine serpent. And the serpent has many hoods. And it, and it acts as an umbrella to cover and shade Vishnu, the forearm divine form Vishnu. And he was laying on his bed. And Lakshmi Devi, who was incarnated as Sita Devi, was giving him a little foot massage because that's what Padasevanam is, giving him a little foot massage. Even though she's the goddess of fortune, she's giving the Lord of her heart a little foot massage. So while, while she was giving him a foot massage, so this turtle was in the ocean and it came up and it saw the beautiful feet of Vishnu being massaged by Goddess of Fortune, Lakshmi, baby. And he wanted to climb up the snake and get a better look at what was happening there. And as this turtle was trying to come up and climb and have a better look at Vishnu's feet and get close to it, then because the snake, you know, it's a little slippery, it kept falling off. And he kept trying to climb up again and it kept falling off. So after a few times, Lakshmi Devi, goddess of fortune, who was massaging the feet of her beloved, then she just took the, 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 the turtle and just pushed it aside and made it go back into the ocean. So that same turtle came back in its next life as this boatman because he wanted to do this, have this beautiful opportunity to take darshan, have, uh, have the privilege and honor to see this, you know, the, 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 the beautiful exchange of the lover and the beloved. So he came as the boatman and he got to do what he actually wanted to do was to serve Ram, who was, you know, the Lord of his heart, the love of his heart. So, this exchange happened, and when Kevat finished washing the feet of Ram, then Ram said, you know, it is customary in, as, a, as you know, I was born as a prince, that if anyone does any service for me, I have to give them something in return. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not one of these people that just takes things from people. What's the word in America? We call them what, leeches or something? People who are takers. There's a term, I don't know what the word is, but there are people who are just takers. He says, I'm not one of those takers. You know, you, you have you know, washed my feet, you have taken me across the river, and I just want to, you know, give you, this ring, Sita Devi had a ring. He says, "Can you please see her? This is the, this is the, 
the token of appreciation for your service, for ferrying us across the river. So the boatman, Hebat, he is like, how can I take anything from you? Didn't you know that it is customary in my profession as a boatman that when there is another boatman, when we cross another boatman on the other side, we don't, we're not supposed to charge them anything. Just like a barber in India, when a barber goes to get their hair cut through another barber, the other barber will not charge them because it's not proper to charge someone in the same profession. Is there something like that in America as well? No, in America we charge everybody, right? Doesn't matter if they're in the same profession. <laughs> but it was a tradition those days that, you know, you don't charge someone in the same profession. So he said to, he said to Lord Ram, he says, my dear friend, how can you, how can you charge me? I mean, how can you try to pay me? It's just one boatman to another. So you can't, I can't accept any offerings from you. But Ram said, what are you talking about? I'm not a boatman, I'm a prince. I'm the prince of Ayodhya. He says, yes, but you are ferrying, you are taking suffering souls and putting them in the place of pure transcendental happiness. So you're doing the exact same thing. I'm taking one person from one side of the river to the other. You are taking someone from their suffering condition and putting them in the place of happiness. So you're doing the same thing. So Ram started to realize that my friend is a very, very smart man. He is, he's logical. He doesn't, he just wants to serve. He just simply wants to serve. And Ram said, okay, I understand your logic and you as a, as a boatman, this is your tradition. But in my tradition as a king, I have to offer you something. So then the boatman is thinking, he says, yes, I will accept something. After you finish your, uh, you know, your, uh, they were banished to the forest for 14 years. So he says, when you finish, then you can come back and give me those, give me that ring. You can pay me back at that time. The reason he says that is so that Ram will come back and he will get another opportunity to serve him. So this is the mentality or the consciousness of someone who is in the mood of service of Pada Sevanam, serving from the heart and serving the heart of another. So he is already planning futuristic. Ram is going to leave but I want to see him again and I want to serve him again. So therefore, please come and pay me after 14 years. I will wait here and I'll prepare to serve you again. So this is a story that is there in the Puranas and is there in the, in the Ramayana, beautiful yoga text that tells us stories of these different uh, attributes that are very unique to people who practice. Uh, yoga, yoga life and, and, and spirituality. So, Pada Sevanam is the topic today. That means serving from one heart to another heart. And another sage, he explains Pada Sevanam and he categorizes Pada Sevanam, this island, into five categories. And he says, Good association, taking the association of good people, like really making an effort and walking and taking the association of good people with positive people, with loving people, with spiritual people, as one of those five categories he defines by the Sevanam. And the second one is the constant chanting of gratitude. When we are living in a constant feeling and expression of gratitude, it's called kirtanam. And 
And the third one he explains as part of Pada Sevanam is to serve others and just serve. No discrimination, just serving from the heart. And then Sadhu Sangha Namakirtan Bhagavad Shravan. The third one is to hear about the glories of service from one heart to another. And Diane, I have not forgotten you about the books. And this book called the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is directly speaking about service from one heart to the other. So there's very beautiful stories. I will get that to you for sure. So, Sadhu Sangha, Nama Kirtan, Bhagavad Shravan, these three, and then to live in a sacred place. Sacred place means that a place that has high spiritual frequency. You will be surprised that when you live in a place that has high spiritual frequency, it has the ability to lift you and anyone that comes into that space. So you will have a place in your room, in your house. You have to see how to make that place a sacred place. Your home is a sacred place. It is not a place where we talk nonsense and, and find fault to the whole world and, and bring in negative energy. You will notice that your house will become that sacred place, provided that we are only focusing on cultivating and nurturing the positive qualities and positive things and positive vibrations into that space. And the fourth one, Sadhu Sangha Nama Kirtan Bhagavat Shravan Mathuravas Sri Murtir Shraddhaya Shevan. And then it also explains that whoever and whatever is the object of your love in your heart, you must worship that person. For example, I know in in in, in Keshavi's ashram in Connecticut, whenever I go there, there is a beautiful, uh, beautiful brass. Uh, Deity of Hanumanji. Hanumanji is, is, is this personality who is the epitome of seva, who is the, who personifies seva, service. So that's who she has on her altar. And so every day, I know that she told me that she does her morning sadhana in front of Hanumanji. And this is something that is recommended for each and every one of us. So this sage explains that this four principles, if you practice daily, that is what Pada Sevanam is. So now I'll give you another understanding of Pada Sevanam. Pada Sevanam means to follow the instructions of the teacher. That means because the teacher is simply taking the, the instructions of his teacher and his teacher, which is just pure uh, love that comes in various uh, uh, teachings of values and wisdom. So, because it is coming from a pure place, because it is presented in a, in a, in a way that is uh, with love and compassion, so therefore, to follow the instructions of the teacher, like say, for example, doing our heart space meditation, you know, sleeping well and eating well. These are advice that the yoga texts have given us and we are then passing that on to all of you and putting in the values as to why we do that. So when we follow those instructions to enhance the quality and experience of our life, that is also called Pada Sevan. means to follow the instructions. Because it's not for the benefit of the teacher for you to follow the instructions. They're only simply your well-wishers and your loving friend, and they want 
the best for you and they want the best experience that you could possibly have. So this, one of the sages also explains as a principle of Padasevana, very important principle to follow the simple advice and suggestions. And another sage gives this explanation, which is that Pada means feed, Sevana means to serve. So that means the feed, when it's guided by the heart, it's called Pada Sevana. The feet can go to all kinds of places. It can go to the bar, it can go to the clubs, it can go to parties, it can go to the ocean, it can go to the forest, it can go everywhere, it takes you everywhere. So this Padasevana means when the feet follows the heart, which means that when the heart is connected with the divine, it will make you want to go to places of the divine where there is such spiritually, energetically charged spaces in the world. For example, every year we do something called a yatra. Yatra means a spiritual journey of the heart. We go to different places in India so far where sages have meditated for thousands of years. And when you go to those places, your natural energetic shifts happen because those are places that naturally bring in the beautiful space that we carry within our hearts. For example, when we go to Vrindavan every year, Vrindavan is a place of 5,000 temples. Everywhere you look, someone is praying with such devotion and sincerity and humility. And the energies are so strong that you just, just, just feel so loved. When you go to Rishikesh, so all these places of places of pilgrimage that we go to, pilgrimage of the heart, very important. When we go to, this is called Padasevanam, using the feet to go to the places of pilgrimage where the spiritual energy not just is, is present there, but it amplifies anyone that visits those places. So this is very important. You will notice that yogis who, are, who have given up homes, they just go from one sacred place to another sacred place to another sacred place. They are like honeybees continuously collecting the spiritual vibes and the energies of all those beautiful places. You'll be surprised. You like to go and go to certain places to meditate. Why that is? Because there is a good vibe, there is a good energy. If you go to Connecticut in Middletown, you'll find a beautiful place called the Red Barn. And Dhyana Devi has created a sanctuary where all the healers from Connecticut come there and they practice and they heal everybody and take the suffering and pain of others. And whenever you go there, you can feel the energy and the vibration. It will lift you up. But imagine a place where people have been doing that for thousands and thousands of years and thousands and thousands of sages who are spending time meditating and healing people and healing themselves and sending this beautiful loving energy all throughout the world. So when we take our feet to those places, that is called Padasevana. And there are many, many such places around the world. The reason I'm doing India is because I know those places. I have followed the lives of the sages who used to travel from one of the sacred places to another, simply soaking in the beautiful nectarian energy of love 
of life and joy. And so that is what is recommended as one of the forms of Padasevana, that we should make time and, 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 and meditate on seeing how to go to these places. Now, it comes to the clause. Not that everybody and anybody can go to those places. Why? Because these places, they're, they are so powerful. They're so divinely powerful that you almost have to be invited to go to these places. And you have to be let in because these energies are so beautifully loving and, and, and strong that if you're not ready for it, you may not be invited to those places. Many times, people will want to go to those places, but you'll see there's always be some excuse. Oh, I have to do this. I have to do that. And always something will come up where the universe will make sure that you don't go to those places because you're not, we haven't cultivated that, that intensity and desire to be in that space. So this is Padasevanam, it is a meditation. Meditation where we are always thinking of serving. And going to those places is literally serving our hearts and it's nourishing our hearts. Many times, if you don't love yourself, you'll not be able to make it to this kind of trips. Because those are places where you just completely get filled with love. So each one of those places have a unique spiritual energy that is directly related to the heart, related to bhakti. And therefore, you know, uh, we do this yatra, it's called a yatra, the journey of the heart to those physical locations. And I know that in 2023, Kamala Devi is organizing a big delegation of Europeans. And then, and here from, from, from the US, we're also hoping to get 20, 30 people that we're going to go on this yatra to go to this energetically charged places and engage in service of the locals, serving the widows, serving the, 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 the tribal people who live on nothing and yet they're so happy. We'll go to places where we will and meet the people in the slums that just live under a tarp and they're still maintaining such a level of consciousness of being happy. So these are things that uh, we do as Pada Sevanam, to use our feet to go to places, not just to the bar, to the club, to work, office, and back. So it's deeper. It's something that is directly connected with the heart. So when the feet, movement of the feet is connected and communicated through the heart, it is called Pada Sevanam. This divine incarnations, this primary ten divine incarnations, when the divine comes in the form of a fish, comes in the form of a turtle, it comes in all different species, and also comes in the form of Lord Ram. He is the personification of morality and ethics. He is flawless in his character. So they're called the Das Avatars or Ten Incarnations. In Sanskrit, it's called Matsya Kurma Varaha. He comes in the form of a fish, then in the form of a turtle. And each one of them have very beautiful stories in the Puranas, in the Yoga text. It comes in the form of a boar, then half man, half lion then comes as a warrior, Parashuram, and then comes as Ram, and then comes as a dwarf, comes as Krishna, 
comes as Buddha and comes as Kalki. So these are the ten uh, incarnations of the divine that is stated in the in the yoga text. <clears throat> 